The opening scene features a crime enforcer named Lorenzo Vitale, who is driving towards his secluded winery in Sicily with his grandson. Once there, he asks his grandson to stay in the vehicle while he cautiously ventures inside. To his horror, he discovers that many of his henchmen have been brutally killed. As he walks into the basement, he finds a retired U.S. Marine and DIA operative named Robert McCall, who is being held at gunpoint by two of Lorenzo's bodyguards. The latter asks for the reason why he is here, to which Robert responds that Lorenzo possesses something that he shouldn't have. After a brief exchange, Robert kills the rest of the henchmen, as well as Lorenzo. And the way he does it is nuts, too. He punches his gun through a guy's face. I don't think that's possible. As he walks out of the winery, he notices Lorenzo's grandson in the vehicle and instructs the boy to stay put without moving. However, as he walks up to his car, the boy shoots Robert in the back and makes a quick escape. Despite the injury, Robert manages to board a ferry to go back to the mainland. Later that night, while driving on the Amalfi Coast, Robert pulls over and slips into unconsciousness due to the gunshot. After a while, a local carabiniere named Gio Benucci finds him in this state and decides to help him. He brings him to a remote coastal Italian town in Altamonte, where a doctor named Enzo treats him. Upon regaining consciousness, Enzo informs Robert that Gio saved him. He also inquires whether Gio rescued a good or bad man. Man. But Robert doesn't know how to respond. When he attempts to return home, Enzo intervenes, insisting that his wound requires time to heal and offers him a place to stay. Enzo takes care of Robert, and after three days of treatment, the latter begins to walk with the help of a cane. One day, he ventures outside to explore the town, hiding himself from the cops around the streets. He eventually ends up at a local cafe where he meets an owner and waitress named Amina. She serves him their best coffee, despite him having ordered a tea. You're goddamn right. Shortly after, Gio comes to the cafe on his regular visit with his daughter Gabby and meets Robert. While Amina entertains his daughter, Gio hands over Robert's car keys and clears that he hasn't checked his bags yet. Gio also mentions that he has parked Robert's car behind the station and can retrieve it whenever he feels better. In the next scene, Robert makes an anonymous call to the CIA Financial Operations Group and speaks to an agent named Emma Collins. He tips her off about the winery in Sicily and how it has been connected to the illegal drug trade, disguised as normal business transactions. After conveying this information, he renders the phone dysfunctional. On the other hand, Emma relays the information with other CIA operatives. Robert spends the next few days wandering around the town and eventually gets acquainted with the locals there. In the midst of this, he also learns about Camorra, an Italian mafia gang who harasses and threatens the town people over their earnings, demanding regular payments. In other words, they're bad guys. And Robert is a good guy. That's all you really need to know. One day, Robert notices a local seafood vendor named Angelo getting beaten up by a high-ranking Camorra member named Marco Quaranta. Before leaving, he threatens Angelo that he will come back next week to collect the money. Following this, the gangsters head to a large building where the leader of the Camorra, who is also Marco's brother, Vincent Quaranta, is trying to forcefully evacuate the premises. It turns out that Camorra is working on their grand plan commercializing the town by building new hotels, resorts, and casinos. In one of the building rooms, an elderly man in a wheelchair refuses to comply with the gang. As a result, the gang members hang the old man from the window, leaving him to die. Just in case you didn't know, they were the bad guys yet. On the other hand, Robert and Enzo share a pleasant dinner conversation, and Robert insists on helping him with his daily errands. The following morning, he goes to the market on behalf of Enzo and visits Angelo's shop. The kind-hearted Angelo refuses to accept payment for the groceries, stating that it's his honor that Enzo's friend has come over to his shop for the first time. Meanwhile, Emma and other CIA operatives, acting on Robert's tip-off, arrive at the winery to conduct their investigation. There, they uncover millions in cash, along with bags full of illegal narcotics hidden in a storeroom. Surprised that these activities were off their radar, Emma and her colleague Frank Conroy decide to go into the depth of the matter. On a rainy day, Enzo is examining Robert's wound when the latter asks him for the reason why he treated him without involving any ambulance or police. In response, Enzo reminds him of his first question that he asked about being a good or bad person and how he had no answers to it. He claims that his silence was indeed the sign of a good person. The next evening, Robert retrieves his backpacks and prepares to leave the town, but he is stopped by the sound of a bell. Just then, he notices the town people rushing towards Angelo's shop 
shop, prompting him to follow them. It turns out that Marco and his gang have burnt down Angelo's shop due to his inability to make payments. Despite this dominance, the town people can do nothing but watch helplessly. Later, Robert, along with some townspeople, help Angelo to clean up the mess. Meanwhile, Gio reviews footage of the firebombing and calls the Italian Central Police for an inquiry about a van that was seen outside Angelo's shop. In the midst of this, Robert is gradually recovering, becoming a part of the local community and deepening his friendship with Amina. Amina. He also explores more of the local cuisine of Altamonte, eventually adapting to the town. As a result of all this, the Camorra interfering and bringing their influence into Altamonte troubles him far more than he had expected. On one routine day, Robert is seen enjoying his coffee at Amina's cafe when he spots Emma secretly trying to take his photo. Robert then confronts her, suggesting that she capture the photo from a better angle. Emma asks why and how he has such precise information about the winery's real business. However, he sticks to giving her some vague answers, also advising her to delve into her remaining work. As she leaves, she addresses him by his name, which surprises him. Later that day, Gio goes to pick up his daughter from school. During this time, he receives a call from an unknown number, informing him that Gabby's school was over a bit earlier than the other kids. Concerned, Gio inquires to one of the teachers, who reveals that an officer had picked Gabby up just a while back. In a state of panic, he rushes home, only to find his wife and daughter held captive by the Komora gang. Marco then beats him up in front of his family, punishing him for interfering in their operations. The gang threatens to take the life of his family if he interferes again. In the evening, Robert notices Gio leaving Enzo's office with blood patches on his face. Curious, he asks about the matter, and Enzo explains that such incidents are common in many towns due to the Camorra. According to Enzo, the issue is like cancer with no cure. So, just like cancer. The next day, Robert goes to the church where he meets Emma one more time. She confirms that Lorenzo Vitali had been on Interpol's most wanted list for a decade and that his operation was quite huge in itself. Intrigued about why he chose her for the anonymous tip, Emma questions his intentions. However, he diverts the subject by stating that she should be focusing on why Sicily was being targeted for these smuggling activities. Promising to find the answer soon, Emma says that she hopes to know the answer to her original question in their next meeting. That evening, Gio and his family are having dinner at a restaurant when Marco and his peers interrupt their quality time. Marco demands that Gio help them set up a boat for their private business purpose. Robert, who is also in the same restaurant, overhears their conversation and requests that they leave the family alone. In response, Marco threatens him to stay away from matters that don't concern him. In a calm tone, Robert expresses his growing fondness for this town and its people. He then urges Marco to take his business elsewhere and warns him of the consequences if he doesn't comply. When Marco still ignores the warning, Robert twists his shoulder and locks up his hand, making him scream. He says, I'm pressing on your hibbledy tibbledy nerve. The pain is gonna get real bad. He then orders Marco to leave his gun on the table and exit the restaurant with his men. After a while, the enraged Marco plans to go back in with his henchmen and kill Robert. But before they can go forward with their plan, Robert drives a van through two of his henchmen and starts fighting them. At one point, Marco holds him at knife point and threatens to take his life. Regardless, Robert retaliates by twisting Marco's hand and drives the knife through his neck, ultimately killing him. And he didn't even have to grab his hibbledy bibbledy nerve. The following morning, Frank contacts Emma from Rome to let her know about the latest station bombing. It's revealed that the cash found earlier in the winery was also linked to a similar terrorist act. This makes Emma realize that the Camorra is directly funding terrorism by paying for smuggling drugs into Sicily. Furthermore, she speculates that Naples serves as the primary transit point for drug transpo and suspects the involvement of another team in Naples. Determined to unravel the entire chain, she begins her investigation by interviewing key members of the Camorra. For this, she also requests partnership and access with the head of Naples' police. Later on, we see the same police chief attending the funeral of Marco at Vincent's mansion. During this, he informs Vincent about the involvement of CIA officer Emma, who is investigating their illicit trades. Vincent, who is mourning his brother's death, becomes enraged by the statement and slices off the chief's hand. He then threatens the chief to focus on finding out the person behind Marco's death. After this, Vincent sends the police chief to the hospital with his severed hand preserved in an ice bucket. Elsewhere, Emma receives a call informing her about the police chief's predicament. Shortly after, she also gets a call from Robert, who tells her
her about the Camorra's involvement in the drug cartel, closely tied to the earlier station attack. Robert's call inadvertently saves Emma's life, preventing her from falling victim to Vincent's planned bomb attack on her car. In the aftermath, Emma is immediately rushed to the hospital for med assistance. There, she meets Frank and alerts him about the Camorra. Upon learning everything, Frank assures her that he will handle the remaining operation. That evening, Vincent takes Gio and his family as hostages and threatens to shoot them in front of the entire town if his brother's murderer doesn't show up. When Vincent doesn't receive any information, he shoots Gio's ear and threatens to end him with the next shot. Just then, Robert reveals himself to Vincent and asks him to let the captives go. He claims that he's ready to be taken away and tortured, but not in front of the townspeople. However, Vincent, who is as arrogant as his brother, refuses, asserting that the locals must witness the consequences against the Camorra. But before Vincent can kill him, the town people start recording the ordeal, causing the gangsters to retreat. The same night, Robert infiltrates Vincent's home and stealthily kills his bodyguards one by one. Vincent, who is asleep, is startled by a drop of blood on his forehead. The glass right above him suddenly shatters, but he narrowly manages to escape. He then grabs his gun and tries to contact his already deceased gang members. Shortly after, Robert approaches him and forces him to take a lethal dose of his own drugs. Vincent tries to run away from his mansion, but Robert follows him. Eventually, the gangster collapses on the cobbled road of Naples and ultimately succumbs to drug overdose. The next morning, Robert pays a visit to Emma at the hospital, who expresses her gratitude for saving her life. He drops a bag of cash on the floor and shares the story of a man named Greg Dyer, who had lost his pension in a cyber attack. This makes her realize that Robert had followed the trail of the attack to the winery, killed Lorenzo and his henchmen, and retrieved the exact cash that was owed to Greg. Curious, she asks if Robert and Dyer are friends, to which he clarifies that they have only met once. In the next scene, Emma goes to Boston in order to deliver the lifetime earnings to Greg and his wife. Greg asks about the identity of the generous benefactor and wonders why someone would go to such lengths for a stranger. However, Emma replies that she would love to know the reason as well. After she departs, Greg happily asks his wife to unpack everything because they don't have to sacrifice their house anymore. One day, at the CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia, Frank hands Emma a package containing a diary and a note from Robert. Much to her surprise, it's her mother's diary. As she connects the dots, she learns that Robert is none other than a friend of her parents from the CIA. In the final scene, the residents of Altamonte are seen celebrating their victory in a football match. Robert also participates in the celebration with some borderline cringe but still badass dance moves as one of the locals. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.